make sure we're in the limitless women rising where together when women come together and recognize that we are limitless we can rise together it's our time right yeah so goodness yes anyways hello hello this is day five of the fire starter challenge and i am delighted to share today it's my secret sauce for accelerated manifestation and all the days previous to this have kind of led up to this moment in time but here's here's the thing each one of these steps is you, you can't miss one you just can't miss one and so that's that's why we bring this all together oh we got somebody miss phoenix hopping on um each one of these steps is so interrelated if you miss one then you don't have all the secret sauce if you will to create the momentum in your life to break through the inertia of living the life that you've always been living Deanna, how are you oh my gosh so good to see you you too i'm actually in position to watch it on zoom instead of just on replay <laughs> excellent i'm so happy you and i need to to connect because it's just been way too long it has well, here, let me introduce you to Karen. Thanks for you, you guys uh, hopping on live so you can be my live guinea pigs here as we talk about, I uh, just teeing it up. We're talking about accelerated manifestation. I'm going to just dive right in. The playbook, um, if anybody's watching and doesn't have the playbook, just go ahead and um, DM me. We're going to walk through um, the visual of this together right, right now. But as I was saying, there's, there's all these steps. Hold on this each one plays upon the other there we go y'all can see that um now can i move it all right so here we are here we are day five <laughs> accelerated manifestation so literally i'm walking right through what what you have on on your um the playbook here so i i don't know has anyone ever done a a uh adventure race <laughs> So this is one of the obstacles. It's the last obstacle in a uh, adventure race I did here in Denver. It's called the Tough Mudder. And this is, they call it the monster. And this is the very last thing that you go up. So you're, you, you're already all muddy. You've been jumping through, you know, hoops and doing the monkey bars and crawling through mud and stuff. And you come to this, this last thing and it's a 12 foot wall. Now people who've already finished the race or volunteers are up here at the top and they're ready up there to reach down and give you a hand up over the wall. But here's the thing, like you, you gotta kind of step back get clear and really intentional about what you're going to do you're summoning up all your the last of whatever energy <laughs> you might have you are about to defy gravity you're going to run up a wall and just it's so metaphorical in life so we've got it's kind of like the universe is up here it's ready to help you right it's going to reach a hand down but it requires this kind of partnership effort so you've got to be ready, summon up all your energy, that clear intention, that burning desire, run up there with reckless abandon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> go to your all and, and reach up and grab the hand and then they'll lift you over. There's no way you could do this on your own. And it's the same kind of thing. So I love this metaphor because our dreams, like we're meant to live in full vitality. And I told you my, my company, I call it the vitality code because it's not just about health. We should have full vitality in every aspect of our lives. So for you to, to have this, our dreams should be big and juicy. We should have 12 foot dreams, you know, not, not these simple things that, that you can get. The universe delights in us dreaming big and reaching down to help us achieve that. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the metaphor here. But we're going to dive right in. So here's um, uh, the beginning of, of the sheet, mm -hmm. just kind of to review where we've been. So essentially, like I was saying, we're meant for abundance, vitality, harmony. Nature is, is abundant. It's all around us there, like the hand ready to reach down. And it really requires us to, to know um, that it's available to us and that we truly can 
have this all. So I don't need for you guys to read this all, um, but here's just to kind of review what we've been talking about this week, getting clear on that vision and allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to want it all. Then we release, we do the energetic healing work, the clearing work to, to let go of the unprocessed emotional garbage that we've been dragging along way too long. We talked a lot of that about that on the freedom day. So all the thoughts, the limiting thoughts that are running in the subconscious that are kind of holding us back. You know, it's kind of like, what, how well would you do if you had, you know, a, a 50 pound bag of potatoes behind you as you're trying to run up the tough mutter uh, monster wall? right? But that's what we're doing. We don't even recognize that we have all this, all these potatoes, <laughs> the rotten potatoes we've been dragging along. And if it's childhood stuff, which most of it is, we've been carrying this stuff around for decades. So would you gift yourself the day, this opportunity now to um, get that support, to release that stuff? And this is, you know, part of my the stuff that I, the work that I do that brings me such joy is really creating this kind of container for women come together because so much of the stuff that's holding us back is really that collective, you know, the not thinking ourselves to be worthy enough, just the old um, patriarchal kind of power over is the, the way we've been operating for a lot of our, our lives. And we women are really powered in a different way. We're more of a collaborative and, and co-creative kind of approach. When we align with that divine feminine way of being, that's kind of like stepping back of, the, of that wall, summoning up our energy by tapping into our natural way of being, that sourcing our, our intuition, you know, hearing that voice within when we're when we're motivated, we're, when we're inspired by that voice within, that inner knowing, it's like, that's where you have the true confidence to really go for your dreams. And then this nourish piece, again, it's that piece of becoming. You are becoming the vibrational equivalent of this amazing vision that you just created. Um, just, I was just watching a little bit of Bob Proctor last night, and he's saying this, you know, the same exact principles. He's from the he was one of the stars in the secret and just, you know, just such a, a leader in this new thought kind of approach, but recognizing that the whole world, everything is made up of vibration. And if you are still lingering with some of the old thoughts, feeling I'm not enough, I'm not, it's not safe. I don't deserve, I'm not lovable. I don't belong. Like there's a whole litany and a lot of these things, like I said, are these collective things. So I love facilitating this kind of thing. And um, the invitation at the end of this, if you decide that you would like to go in and like actually clean up some of this stuff, I've got my my 10 week program will be starting. It's it's dynamic. It's called La Femme Salon. It's 10 weeks to find your fire, freedom and fulfillment. It is life changing. <laughs> I love the number one thing that I hear from women who've gone through it. And like I said, my favorite testimonial to testimonials, great ones at the end of the 10 weeks, but I love hearing their lives continue to unfold because when we let go of those old potatoes, your life can continue now to spiral up in the most beautiful, delicate, um, just exciting way. So they're living their dream lives. And that that's what I want for you. It's, a, it's available for all of us. So <laughs> I love uh, one of my favorite movies is Dead Poet Society. Remember that scene where Robin Williams says, garbage. So make your lives extraordinary, ladies. And this is the way we're going to get there. So here we go. Accelerated manifestation. Again, this, these are the same topics that we've touched on up until now. There's a couple more together to put together this entire roadmap. Again, if you're weak in one of these, it's kind of like the tough mutter. If, you, if your shoelace is untied, you might have a challenging time getting up the wall. So just be um, aware of this. And again, this is the exact playbook. So go ahead, grab your playbook, print this stuff out and, and journal the stuff for yourself. What is the dream that you're looking to, to uh, create? Shall I call you Phoenix, Dean? Whichever you prefer. 
<laughs> Do you have something that you're looking to manifest? Um, financial freedom. Let's go for money. Who out there might want some more money? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I, I would think that's a hundred percent out here. So let's do that. And and it's that's actually a really great. I love facilitating around money because it's one of the most emotionally charged subjects that's out there. And it's awesome because when we irritate an old wound like that, of and it ties into these core beliefs like I'm not worthy, I'm not valuable. Like um, Karen and I were talking about having the same dad. <laughs> kind of because you know hearing stories like you'll never amount to anything it's like well thanks for the <laughs> go get them girl you know kind of upbringing but we all have our our version of that in one way or another and it's part of life's beautiful journey if we allow it to be right so up until now we're hanging on to the meaning of you know dad hobbled me for life or you know whatever the whoever we're blaming for whatever we're not not achieving and it's like wait a second today can be the day that I'm like oh wait I'm assigning a new meaning so energy is not not positive or um, it's not good or bad it's not right or wrong it's not positive negative it's really our perception of what happened to us in that time so even if it was a, a terrible trauma on some level our soul is <laughs> may have conjured that up to give us the very wounding to help us overcome and grow into more of that. So my wounding with the crummy dad story was to find value in myself and to, you know, kind of stake my own course. He wanted me to go be an accountant because the world always needs accountants. It's like, no, no, I wanted to have these creative endeavors. And I've had an amazing, my mom said, a turned life with the things that I selected to do that were completely out of the ordinary, shall we say. So not taking the safe route. So which which path do you want to take? Um, so anyways, the first step here then is what I call future scaping. And hopefully if you've been following along, make sure day two at the end of that, I did the visualization that kind of walks you through actually time traveling, getting clear on that future you who's having it all. You step into the house, give her a hug, have that conversation. When inspiration comes in the whole block the whole information just drops right in. you get this felt sense of what that is and this is part of you know um let's talk about the movie the secret they they talked about visioning that kind of a thing but we really 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 want to make sure that we um get it to where it's a vibrational sense so i call this future scaping get clear on the vision of the future you who is having it all who do you have to be what do you have to let go of? And, and again, print out the previous playbooks because we walked through a lot of that, the, especially yesterday with the Brene Brown conversation of the things that we're letting go of so that we can cultivate this divine, the woman who's in line with her divine feminine power and ready to step forward to that, into that. So the me who is having it all looks like this and all my vibrational glory. You know, I think uh, when we came back together after doing the future self, things. Many descriptors are the same. I'm radiant. I'm grounded. I'm energized. I'm loving. There's people around me. Like you get the whole felt sense of what that looks like. Day two, um, not day two, number two, <laughs> the second step is to turn up the intensity to be a burning desire with a definiteness of purpose. And I intentionally dragged some of these words out from the best success book of all time, which is Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill wrote that, you know, eons ago, and it still is the best selling success book of all time for all uh, good reason, because the principles are timeless. So he says, begin with a burning desire, meaning, <laughs> you know, this is it's kind of like that, that energy to get up the wall, make sure there's an intensity of it. And we begin to feel it vibrationally in our body, what that feels like. So what will it mean to me, to my family, to my friends, like everybody around you take that, that picture and expand it so that it's energetically, it's like fire, essentially. <laughs> That's what we're doing here, right? This fire starter challenge. We want to stoke it up, baby. Um, step three is to release any low 
lower vibing thoughts, emotions, belief, and self identities. And this is the part that's challenging to do on our own because 95% of this is pinging around in the subconscious. If you knew it, if you were aware of it, chances are <laughs> you would have stepped through it um, before. But as I said, there's also kind of a, a difference between a, a mental, a intellectual knowingness of, you know, my wounding with the crummy dad story looks like not trusting men or whatever, or thinking I will never amount to anything. You might have a mental mm, awareness of it, but it's so important. Again, as vibrational beings, we want to clear up the many light layers of ourselves. We've got the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual aspects of ourselves. We want to clear the slates of the vibrational. It's kind of like the dust bunnies that are hanging out there. Clear those out so that you are now 100% energetically clear, focused, ready to, to roll towards that, which you're calling in. So some, again, it's this releasing some of the things I'll release and let go and some affirmations or truth, um, that I can choose to recognize are, and I wanted to kind of highlight this because affirmations are a very powerful tool. But if you're trying to layer an affirmation over some old limiting beliefs or emotional unprocessed gunk, it's not going to work. It's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig. So you can sit there. Let's let's use money. You know, I love T. Harvecker. He's one of my heroes. Um, he wrote the book uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And um, you can't just use his affirmation and say, I'm a money magnet and, and truly believe that. <laughs> because if you, as soon as I say that, I don't know about you, but as soon as I say I'm a money magnet or I've got a millionaire mind like T. Harv Eker, you know, these are some of his affirmations. It's like, now there's that voice inside of me that says, now, not only are you not a millionaire, you're, you don't, you're not a money magnet. Now you're a liar too. And so we got to go in. We can't just layer on an affirmation until we've cleaned up what's underneath that. Because if there's in, in there, it, it's a lack of integrity essentially within ourselves. And what we don't recognize is, you know, we talk about women, we have a hard time making healthy boundaries, right? A lot of that is because um, when, when we sell ourselves out, um, because we like it, you know, we're getting at buddy, buddy, buddy. Um, when, when we put other people's, um, needs before ourselves slowly, essentially we're beginning to make little itty bitty lies to ourselves. We say that we're going to do such and such a thing, but we sell ourselves out and go take care of this, putting other people's needs before our own. And, um, slowly in time we're degrading our level of self-integrity so what we want to do and this is part of this process that i think is one of the most missed steps because we want to dive into the affirmation we want to dive into the positive action even we're a doing you know we're strong and we've been pushing through and making it happen and we can do hard things right we can do hard things but why? <laughs> Why would you choose? Let's first do the thing that might seem a little scary. And it just reminds me of that, that meme that comes up every now and again on, on Facebook, you know, there's a little tiny kitten and the light is behind it. So when it reflects up on the wall, it looks like this big, scary lion. Right. And it's like, I hate to tell you, but most of our wounds are like that little kitten. So here we are avoiding the thing. And, it, uh, I'm not sure why I'm thinking of my laundry basket. I love doing laundry. I hate folding and putting it away. Okay. Truth be told. And, you know, if I would just dive into the thing I'm avoiding, it takes me five minutes to get everything put away and tidied and then it feels great. Right. So it, we just, it's our human nature, right? We all have our thing. So for me, laundry and money. Um, so moving right along. The fourth step is we have to then become the vibrational match for the very thing that we say we're choosing to call in. So what does that look like? It means practice, practice, practice. We want to become the dominant, the dominant emotion. We have to practice that emotion every day. And again, you know, how many times I look at new year's resolutions, right? People will set an intention for the year. Here's my resolution. I'm going to put my laundry away, <laughs> whatever, um, whatever those things are for you. I'm going to keep whatever it is. So 
first thing, so here, here's the thing. We talked about this um, when we were talking about freedom on day three. The first, our brain waves in the morning, we are vibrational beings. And when we are sleeping, we go into a delta brain wave where we are most impressionable. So take advantage of that time. The two times of day when we have the greatest ability to impact our subconscious beliefs and help them to become the new habit that we want to install is first thing in the morning. And then again, right before you go to bed, we talked about how um, you're going to be sleeping for eight hours and, and your brain softens and opens up. So let's intentionally create the marinade, the secret sauce that you want to soak in that eight hours. So rather than watching the news up until 11 o'clock and then, you know, going to bed all <laughs> with that kind of energy, we don't, we don't want to um, go to bed with that kind of energy. So use these things. First thing in the morning, I will rehearse this vision by, and we want to take you through that step. Again, the playbooks have walked you through all of this. Um, before bedtime, I will re rehearse this vision by, and then the fun ways for me to bring joy, love, and creativity in my life. And, and again, one of the early um, handouts was the essences that you want to step into. So we, some of the ones that we kind of teased out. So these are some of them, love, creativity. We talked about fun. Other people said bold or, or uh, sassy or, you know, check out that list. The thing is to make this something that you check in with regularly because our natural default is to get caught up in the brain with all the things we have to do. We want to shift our focus to the being qualities and, um, We've, we've got lots and lots of momentum towards a negative self-identity, right? So in order to break the momentum, we need to kind of really juice it up and visit this frequently throughout the day. So that's why I created that little thing that you can tack up someplace. For me, I shared that I keep my vision board by um, in my bathroom where I'm brushing my teeth and every morning I'm plugging into that. Um, I want to soup it up. There's something I'm intending to create. So I'm going to create a manifesto and I will repeat each one of the lines of the manifesto. And this is one of the practices that I walk people through in La Femme Salon. We'll create a manifesto. And it's such a beautiful process because when you come up with that declaration of who you are and who you are becoming, um, it's the truth. You're like speaking into this higher truth of that your essential self already knows you to be. You're pretty darn amazing. And I want to remind you of it now. And I want to, to have you create the practices that, um, that have you know this. So then as we, this, this is, I, I keep wanting to say, no, this is, this is a secret sauce. No, this is the one, but <laughs> Each one is like part of the secret puzzle here. So I shared this story um, of Barb yesterday about how she stepped in beyond rationality, right? A lot of the dreams that you want won't come by in a practical linear way. The true magical times, just think of your own life, the most magical, say, trips that you ever took, the, the times when like the greatest synchronicities happened, it was never anything that you could possibly have planned like allow let's play with the universe the universe loves to surprise and delight us and we have to create the spaciousness and let let go of the need for control in order to make this happen but it comes from developing this deep source um, trust in our own intuition hearing that inner voice and we need to create space and quiet for that so a nudge that you know that you've had already that you haven't acted upon is that's the prompt because our inner knowing is there all the time it knows so ask the ask this question and the answer will come <laughs> chances are you've got the whole story right there ready to 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 come out so my intuition is telling me that the next best steps are and the thing i can do this week to get the ball rolling which is key we, we can get inspiration, but unless you take a step in the direction of that dream, then it's just going to be that inspiration. We need to, to begin to create the momentum to climb that wall, right? We want to, we got to defy gravity. So you have to take an immediate action. And then this is it. We've got to release 
and trust that the universe has your back. So we talked about the, the difference between paranoia, which most of us, I mean, thank you to the media. Hello, how can you not live in a great degree of paranoia, right? The, the world, everything's falling apart, the institutions, and that's for good reason. And <laughs> Yeah, thank God, you know, a lot of these things just don't work. And it's so fascinating because we'll hold on to the comfort, um, the thing that we know, oh my gosh. So way back when I was working at Office Depot in my corporate job way back when, and I was lucky, I had a really delightful job. I was um, doing marketing events. They started with sponsoring golf tournaments. But anyways, there was this woman there, I'll call her Anne, um, and she'd been there forever. And she every single day of her life came in and complained about working and how awful it was at Office Depot. Well, then we got downsized one day and I was delighted, delighted because I was already getting a calling. The place is getting big. There were lots of like mid-manager and you had to kind of like protect your job and cover your ass rather than just focusing, doing good work and the camaraderie. All of a sudden there's backstabbing, not, not the place I wanted to thrive, right? So we got called in, into a group and I'll never forget, I could just see it like it's yesterday. This is 20 some odd years ago. Here's Anne, like in hysterics that she's losing her job. And she's like under the under the conference table in the fetal position. And I'm like high-fiving my friend. We're like, yeah, we're out of here because we're getting a severance. They're paying us to leave is awesome, right? How could it turn out better than you could possibly even imagine? We're getting a, we're getting a severance. And here's and under the conference table and afterwards I'm like what the heck you know you hate this place they're paying and she'd been there longer than anybody she's getting paid more than anybody to leave and she couldn't let go of the security because she didn't have this level of trust that she would be provided for for us to cultivate the inner resourcefulness we may not be able to see the resources around us at this moment in time but that level deep level of trust that we are provided for. So instead of paranoia, going to pro-noia, meaning that we know that we are infinitely loved, supported, and provided for. And there's 10,000 unemployed angels just waiting for us to make a request. Uh, could you help me understand what my next step is, or it's not coming clear enough? Could you make it a little easier for me to understand what that might be? So have your dialogue with the with the universe, with your angels, with, uh, I mentioned my, my guides, Ralphie, yeah, they're they're always laughing at me because you know you you don't have to wait like once a day to talk to us or once a week. It's like you could talk to us all throughout the day. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> got that. Sorry guys, they're waiting. But thankfully, the time and space they don't they don't live with time and space, so it's no time to them. Nothing, nothing. All. What did I write here? My secret um, to releasing the need for control or to know the cursed house. So a lot of times we want to create something and. Um, like Karen, you had such a great example yesterday. So in order to manifest this, this job, here's all the things. And yes, 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 yes. Get so specific and all the details, right? Of all this, the, the elements that you would like in this ideal job. Um, anything you'd like to chime in with, like how you understand I, the I just, I, I'm like you, like I have the list up. Um, I have one in my bathroom and it's, like specifics and it's the big thing is like teamwork and synergy and professional development and obviously like the financial piece you know <laughs> is huge yeah. and the benefits um and and I do I I look at it every day I say it out loud every day and um you know my my thing is like I talk to the angels but I don't ask enough so when you said the other day like they're always there they're just waiting to be asked it doesn't have to be just once a day you know and like I don't know why I had such a like I don't want to say time limit but like okay I'll ask like once a week yeah it happens at eight o'clock in the morning right? <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so it's really opening up and being like like you just said you can ask them as many times during the day because they're just waiting to be asked and, and then and then it's kind of finding the worthiness where like, am I worthy enough to ask for help from somebody? And so that's kind of been a challenge for me as along the way is where I do the affirmations and I'm like, okay, well, I kind of need help, but do I deserve to ask them for help? And then I'm like, yes. Okay. Once a day, once a week, once a month, like how often? So yeah. you brought up such a great point too. And, um, you know, I think this is a pitfall for us spiritual people is because we've been, <laughs> schooled to have gratitude right um mm -hmm. for everything which is essential but um sometimes we fall into the trap of thinking we should be 
satisfied with what we have. Yeah. And the truth is there's, there's infinite, there's limitless supply and store available to us and the universe would delight. It wants to expand and all of us he, little humans here sitting with our little pea brains trying to figure it out are keeping the universe limited. So go ahead and um, so I'm going to tie this back to my story about Office Depot and when we got let go, one of my friends, we were talking about, you know, what next and how much, you know, you got to get clear on the, the how much. Um, a friend of mine had different, different level of belief and she was asking for an, an amount, I'll be, a, I was astounded when she spoke it out loud because to me it was so much less than what I would have personally valued her. If I were hiring her, I would have paid her much higher and it, even now, it just, it makes me just want to cry because that was her level of self-worth and guess how much she got. She got the level that she asked for. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it, take the time, you know, there's, there's the, the story. I don't know if this is true. Uh, Abe Lincoln chopping down the, the tree. I don't know who, who said it, but if you're chopping down the tree, you see somebody chopping down a tree and they've got four hours to do it. They should, um, it's so much more efficient. If you've got a, a um, blunt, blunt ax and you're trying to cut down the tree, it's so much more efficient to stop and spend the first entire hour. If you need to, to sharpen the ax and you can chop the down the tree down in two and a half hours versus the four. So we need to take, you know, sharpen. In this case, your ax is your level of self-confidence that you deserve that. And again, this is a universal thing for women. I mean, look at the statistics. We're paid a fraction of what men get, right? There's interesting um, studies now that women, men will take action when they are 30% certain that they'll meet with success. Women oftentimes require 80% confidence that they will meet with success before we'll take the step. And that we're limiting ourselves, women. So, um, you know, when you trust the universe has your back, you're willing to take a bigger leap. Yesterday, I shared the story of Barb who went through La Femme Salon and she was able to let go of some of those core wounds for her as an adopted daughter. Um, belonging and her own value. Hello, these same things, right? We all, <laughs> all of us have the, these core things. When she got grounded in her, her sense of intuition, she got a call to move and take the most irrational choice to quit her job and move to <laughs> Florida, St. Augustine, gorgeous. Um, everything cracked open for her, her friends holding on, pleading, you can't do that don't leave us. They're saying her family here. Hello, heart tugs, the cursed house. How can you do that? I don't know how, but I'm called to do it. And I trust the universe has my back. And then everything opens up. We must take the leap. You got to let go of the shore that you know, in order to have the thing. One of the conversations I was facilitating last month, the, the deep wounding, we all, um, remorse that we had about the most challenging times in our lives was that the the regret that came with that was that we had held on to longer than we needed to. So has there been a relationship? Has there been a job that you can look back in your own life and recognize, man, I really held on. And a lot of that is because of this lack of certainty that, that you can do it, that you're resourceful <laughs> and that, that the universe is going to help lead the way there. And then uh, step seven, find, find ways to invest in your growth and personal expansion. Your, your cup, run it over. You know, um, there's a, a, the saying, like, if you're going to go down to the ocean, are you going to carry, you know, like a little thimble and, and get a, you know, a thimble's worth? Or do you want to carry a gallon bucket or a five gallon bucket? It's like, let, let's expand our capacity to receive. And uh, yeah, Here, here's another cute little story because we learn with stories, right? Metaphors help us to relate in ways and, and to pour in our own experiences into this. But uh, T. Harv Eker tells a story about a dad taking his son in to get some ice cream. So the son's only four and a half years old. So they go into the, into the ice cream store and he gets his little scoop and he's coming out and it's a hot day like it's been and walks outside and he's licking it and he licks a little too hard four and a half, you know, he's 
doing a uh, good job walking and carrying an ice cream cone, let alone licking it. So he's lick, licks it and the top falls right off and boom, <laughs> right onto the sidewalk and he starts crying. And the dad says, oh, don't worry, there, there's plenty, right? We'll go in and get you another one. So he goes in and as, as they're waiting in line, he sees the, the ad with a picture of the double scooper. And the kid says, dad, can I have the double scoop? So <laughs> what do you think the dad's gonna do? Is he gonna buy him, give him the double scoop if he can't handle the one? And so the, the dad asks, he's like, yes, you can have the double scoop when you learn how to handle the one you've got. So can you handle the one you got and desire to have that second scoop? So when I invest in myself, I expand my capacity to receive. So what is it that you're willing to grow and how? Make a plan for that. And then last, um, moving right along. So this is one of the things, and, and women, we're just another way we're, we're kind of programmed is that we don't acknowledge ourselves, right? We don't want to be the center. We don't kind of a thing. So, but we need to learn to celebrate ourselves to our own horns. It's okay because you're pretty darn magnificent. And so is everybody else. So we get to take turns celebrating each other, but I, I love bringing women together in, in groups so that we can celebrate one another. When we celebrate the wins, it creates the, well, a couple of things. It begins to create a momentum <clears throat> toward the very thing that it is that we say that we desire. Keith. Um, there, so there's a momentum that gets created, but we also begin to reinforce that, that self-identity that I am doing good things and I'm having what I say that I'm, I'm choosing. Uh, so someone who sees my vision, we need to, we, we need to surround ourselves with people who can support our forward vision. And here's the sad truth of that is a lot of the friends that you may have had are kind of like Anne who's underneath the, the conference table. They want you to stay. Their sense of security is you showing up the way they've always known you to be. Some of your friends may not have the grown expanded capacity to see you as you begin to step into your more expanded, more manifesting and um, profit, no, we're talking money, uh, rich, abundant self, right? Uh, you may actually threaten their sense of who they think themselves to be if you step into having more than they're ready and capable of having at this moment in time. So it's ultra important. And I see women at our stage of life kind of doing an inventory, if you will, of the friends who that you have right now, who are the high vibe ones that you want to hang with? Um, it's okay to hang on to the other ones as well, but be intentional with what you share with them and how much time that is because you become the average of the five people that you are hanging out with most. So who are those cool people that you want to hang with? And um, some of the ways I see that I can already step into that is like fill in this blank. Who is your trusted tribe? Um, and uh, again, I just want to keep relating this back because the the way I've created La Femme Salon is to hit on each and every single one of these elements. When we come together in a close-knit group of women who all share an intention of growth and personal actualization beyond what we've ever known up until now, each one of that holding that vibration, seeing that in one another, we can borrow our confidence from the other person of like, okay, I, I'm daring to dream. Um, Deanna, let's talk about money. Let's say, you know, so stepping into your first $100,000 a year or whatever that is, it's like the other person is going to see that vision with you. And when, you know, just like in the, the Bible, when, when two or more are gathered, it creates a, a super force, if you will, a super intention to, to pull that towards you. And you get those times when think those days when times get rough and you're kind of replaying old tapes of you'll never amount to anything and you're trying to hold this vision some you can lean into that soul sister friend who sees your soul and knows you to be the one who's got that you are a hundred thousand dollar earner in my mind i see that for you my my gift is seeing the value and helping you to see that in yourself so so important to surround yourself with those those people who will be the wind beneath your wings and lift you elevate you when times are tough when you're questioning your your worth when you just want to to throw in the the towel if you will 
Um, I'll never forget when I was doing triathlon 15 years ago or so, um, we had a group, I was a coach. So my gift is kind of like helping people get, get across the line or whatever regard that is in life. So I was doing that in triathlon training and we had a guest speaker come in and he was a professional train, um, coach, uh, triathlon racer that had won many, many races, obviously, and, and including the, the Ironman type level of races. And I'll never forget him coming in and saying, oh no, he said, in every single race, we have that moment when you feel like I can't go on, I can't do this. And it's really that resourcefulness from within to say, I'm taking the next step anyways. And so, you know, it's not, a, you know, feel the pain and push through it kind of a thing. It's kind of a leaning into the possibility that we can go. And that's, this is what I loved about triathlon is that we can go much further than you ever thought to be possible when you nourish yourself properly. And so that nourishment, we talked the first few days about creating vitality. It's certainly what you eat and drink and how, you know, um, how you train and move in your body, but it goes so far beyond that about resting. So getting back into our natural circadian rhythms of, of effort, times of effort, and then time of rejuvenating, you know, get out even, even incremental, you know, work patterns, work for 25 minutes and take a mental break to step out into nature, refresh your brain and your thoughts and open for creativity. Like these things are part of the, the, the nourishment that, that we require. So allow yourself to, to step into these things. And then truly the ninth step here is to surround yourself with mentors. So people who, who've been there before. <laughs> so my invitation, allow me to be your mentor, would you? Whether it's just on a small scale of going in and cleaning up some of the, the spilt milk in, in life, some of the unprocessed emotional things that you can't even possibly know are, are there. But, but here's the thing, I'll, I wanted to presence about the emotional work. We, I was kind of talking about um, doing some energy work with people yesterday. So in my own personal journey, this, this is what I discovered. So I got fascinated first with vitality. My mom had the crash and burn in the, in the healthcare world after having a stroke, they weren't addressing the whole person. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to understand this. So I became a holistic health coach. And then it's amazing to me because oftentimes we know what to do, but we still don't do it. You know, like put the diet Coke down, <laughs> you know, stop with the second bowl of ice cream. I'm all for having the ice cream, but let's talk, you know, about where the emotional hunger is taking over for the physical hunger. And I recognize that there's that gap in, be, in our behavior, our, our ability, even despite knowing what to do, we still do not have the ability to do it. So with that, I got fascinated with why the psychology behind that, the what lies in the subconscious, why does that override what we're able to do? And so I started doing energy work and it was so much fun because we can go back to those childhood days and clear that stuff up or the generational patterns that have been handed down or the um, stuff that we've inherited from our parents. We're taking on everybody else's poop. We got this big poop pile. And so to be able to let that go was fascinating. And then I recognized in doing only the energy work is that you get stuck in a trap of always looking for what next to be healed. So how, what's the next way in which I'm broken that I need to make myself whole? It's like, don't, we can't just stay in that cycle of, you know, going to healers to, to heal that wound. That's essential. Yes. But we also at the same time need to layer that step one over it. What is your vision? And, and to put into place the accountability towards having that we all need accountability always have. And now in a polluted digital world, you know, there's so much information coming at us all the time. Our ability to stay focused, <laughs> can't even walk into the kitchen and remember what I went in there for, right? So how are you supposed to stay focused on the dreams that you're saying that you want to call forth? Um, so anyways, this is, this is why we all need 
accountability. We all need coaching to give us this new perspective, a shift in your perspective. Like I, we talked about the other day, transformation can happen at the speed of awareness. I want to help you be the one, that reflection to help you find what the awareness is. What perspective have you been using the pattern of thinking up until now that's gotten you the current results? But if you want to take it higher, let's up level that, that way of thinking so that you attract higher. It's as simple as that. The, the cleanup process doesn't have to be, we were talking about therapy therapy, talk therapy, and how that can be a brutal mental, you know, rehash of all the pain that went into that, that whatever traumatic experience, like let's not just stay in the mental aspect of that, just clear it up on an energetic level, clear it, like mop up, use your bounty, clear up that spilt milk so that you're not attracting from that space. And, uh, yeah, just, just you have to have the dream keepers there to to love and support you every step of the way so that's kind of what i've created here la femme salon to me is the perfect it's like the chrysalis for the the caterpillar becoming the the butterfly if you want to make your dreams happen you need all, all this whole combination so um it's much more fun to do together a but it's so important i think we get the most accelerated results when we can let go of those those patterns and we see it so quickly in other people. It's so easy to see it in, in someone else, right? I see it in Vienna, but I can't acknowledge it. It's like, oh, I got that too. Or I thought I was the only one in the world who had it. So we've got this shame. We kind of hide that stuff, but it's so much fun when we come together and we laugh through the release part and we love and uplift one another. It's essential in, in La Femme. I've included two individual sessions so that we go in and do that energetic healing. So um, those broken parts become back into the fullness, not just the wholeness of you are, but who the fullness, it actually becomes your superpower. It's like, you know what? My dad was a super crumb to me. And now I've got this level of self-love. Like I never, ever would have experienced had it not have I, had it, my soul not called in that really crappy childhood experiences back then. So there's, there's so much support. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I've got this new platform. You'll get daily, daily reminders to step into your manifesto, which we'll create together. That alone is an empowering process. We'll do the visualizations. You'll have weekly calls. There's videos that talk about these universal principles and how, what the divine feminine shift is all about. It's happening, ladies. It's happening. It's our time. So it's, it's so available to you. This process can be um, it's a self-nurturing process. It, it's not a, a scary lion on the wall kind of process. We're, we're going to come grab that little kitten, and love her back up into the beautiful fullness that that is you. You are amazing. Your dreams are, are so worthy and you are deserving to have each one of those. Um, the way I work with uh, La Femme, I keep it small, six to eight women. So we're not too too big um, because it's a highly personalized journey that I take you on. Um, if you want information, I'll, I'll send out an email after this. This is a live link you can click on to uh, fill out the application. I want to make sure that you're ready to play full, full out. If not, we'll work individually until, until you are. And uh, that is accelerated manifestation in a, in a nutshell. Deanna, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> What? Oh, you're on mute there, sweet cheeks. So okay. that was like a whirlwind because you stepped in on, on day five. I'm just wondering if any questions came up or. Um, or well, I. Um, I was here on Facebook for Tuesday and I've watched the replays of the other two days. So. Oh, awesome. Um, no, there's a lot to take in. There's, and this has been a very um, enlightening week for me anyway, because Tuesday, right after the one I did with you, I did Sacred Sisters, which is through Mile High Church with Reverend Cynthia. And we talked about um, visioning our future self in that one also. And uh, so I guess that's my next steps right now is to really, you know, who is it that I'm becoming? Narrowing that down more, especially since I'm getting that message from multiple places right now. Yeah, it's universal <laughs> truths, right? So it's going to keep coming in. Um, you know, it's, we're, we are, you manifested us, <laughs> you know? So there's that part in you, that soul side of you that, that knows that you're ready for this. And it's asking the question and conjuring up 
we, you manifested us. And so I don't, you're attuned enough to know you don't need to hear it the third time. So, and it's cool, you know, um, the new moon's coming. It's all about new intentions. So um, what a great time to spend that time to journal and get really clear. A lot, of, a lot of people don't take that time to even that very first step to get real clear on what is, what is it that I really, really want? Or we limit ourselves because, oh, you know, other people don't have it as good as we already do. So, so what <laughs> you choosing more is going to give other people the ability to choose more for themselves as well. Or for me, it's, do I really want what everybody else wants? I mean, I, I really don't want the Mercedes Benz and the yacht. That's not what I want. So yeah, it's saying it's okay to not want that, but to want this other. Yeah. So. Yeah. And just think on a global level with COVID, it was the colossal, like universal shakeup for that kind of a thing. And, you know, I'm not going to throw the whole world into that, but in the U.S. certainly we're kind of on that material. <laughs> Keep up with the Joneses kind of a thing. And that, that's why I moved from Florida. People say, well, you know, what brought you to Colorado? I'm like, no, that the materialistic orientation of the people down in Boca Raton, Florida was driving me out of there. So, you know, it was, you had to have the, the tatas and the, the, I had a cute sob. I love driving my sob, but was that really essential to my happiness? Well, a little bit. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe you get to keep some of that stuff, but still, yeah, you know, I like take a sob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sob was fun. I gotta say, I, I miss that car, but I love my Prius too. So, um, uh, but like you said, it's it's almost daring to want something that isn't part of what the normal normal that the crowd wants. So it does it does take a little a little boldness, a little I don't know. To, to get there. So super great point. Karen's taking us with someplace. We're going someplace. <laughs> yeah. So that that's awesome. It's a super great point. Damn. And, yeah. and then so like I said, each one of these steps, you you can maybe have had a number of the steps in place, but if there's one missing, and uh, again, I'll keep one of pull out each one of them as the most critical, but really if our level of self-belief isn't at, <laughs> I'm deserving, worthy, and capable of having this goal. I'm loved and supported. And if our, if you're not a level 10 at that, then if you've got a level 10 goal, chances are it's not going to be manifesting in your world. And, you know, there, and then we get down on ourselves because it hasn't come. And so we think, well, that's proof that not, that dad was right. And I'm not worthy of that. And I'll never amount to anything or whatever the story is, they become so self-perpetuating and becomes our, our identity. And I wish nothing more than if I could element, elevate, you know, people say, if you could have a magic wand for the day, um, for me, I would like to eliminate self-judgment. Um, women, we, we're our own worst enemies and all the ways every single day <laughs> that we're judging ourselves. It's like, well, what if you judged yourself as worthy today and capable? Just, just, take a break off, but, um, we, it truly be, um, is a matter of creating a, a new level of self-worth and it becomes, it, it has to be habitual. So it's something we practice every day until it becomes our natural set point. And so that, that's what I love about this work and why I created the container of, of La Femme Salon, because you'll, you'll have a touch point every single day and you'll have the love and support of people who, who are helping you fight the gravity of thinking that I'm, I'm worthless, just like dad said, or, you know, whoever your, your perpetrator is that you called in, by the way, <laughs> right? We, that, that moment when we can truly say, I created all of this, even, even the assault on myself, that seems unthinkable. If you take responsibility for that part of your story, um, it, it's all part of the soul's evolution to become embodied in, in truths, like, that we've been wanting to experience for me, this level of self-worth and the self-love, it, it, it's, I dedicated myself to stepping into this, you know, and uh, it, it's my sheer delight to share it with others. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, it's truly, truly my joy. And, you know, it's just tr so fun to, to see when, when people take those bold steps. Um, you know, like I just think of, and sometimes you're not even clear on what it, what it is you want. Uh, one of the gals that went through La Femme Salon, she, 
she um, didn't even know what she wanted. She just recognized that her life wasn't feeling fulfilled and she was lost and spinning and, and just couldn't even get clear on what she wanted. And through this process, she, she took a really crazy move from, from Denver out to uh, someplace in Nebraska and her life just, <laughs> just exploded then friends and the finances were, were not an issue and beautiful new house and just like all the things, all the things. It's like when we get out of the shadow of the thing that, that we think might be security, you know, like and holding on to the job at Office Depot. It's like, no, no. We're, we're oftentimes identifying with a false source of supply. And so one of the spiritual laws of economics is really recognizing that God or the universe or the infinite supplier, whoever you want to call it, um, that is our true source. And when we align in principle with that, you know, allow the money to flow, allow the money to flow. Would you allow yourself a life that is better than you can even imagine right now. So while it's clear, I want to circle back because we talked about Karen manifesting her job. It's it's important to get clear on the specifics. And then from there, we want to go general with it from an, to an energetic level. So, um, you know, I, I hear it all the time when women it, that I'm coaching are looking at, at um, I'm going to go concrete with love as an example. And they're like, oh, Jim, he's wonderful. He, you know, sends flowers and, you know, whatever, it speaks my love language of aff affirmative words or whatever. And we get specific. I want Jim who's six foot and blonde and blue eyes or whatever the thing. It's like, we're limiting the universe from this limitless supply of all these other opportunities out there. So go general with it. What is the energetic of what that I feel appreciated? I love words of affirmation. I love the feeling of a, a man that's, you know, if it's tall, then maybe there's a, a, you know, a way that the hug makes you feel or the safety that he seems to provide that masculine energy or whatever, how, how he shows up, get to the energetic description of what that is, um, clear on what the financial number is. So if you're 100,000 gold, that's important. Um, just like my friend who is calibrating too low, we want to calibrate to that and recognize that so much more is possible. So like what other bonuses, what other perks, you know, might be included and remember to allow all of that to be um, part of the equation. So more than I could possibly even imagine right now. And again, we, we oftentimes limit ourselves. So stop putting the glass ceiling on what you're capable of receiving. What would you receive if there were no cap, <laughs> you know, beautiful, beautiful time. So my invitation is I, I love helping you get clear on this stuff. Um, book a call with me. I will put the link um, on the Facebook group. I'll be sending out the replay today, uh, a link to set up a call. Um, the big invitation, if you're ready to step into something more and don't let money be the limiter. Okay. We'll work through that together, but set up, um, there's first an application process for La Femme because I want this six women, six to eight women that are ready to travel at the same speed to uplift and, um, we'll just talk and see, see where you are. Let's get you clear on exactly where, where you are with your vision, where it is that you're likely most stuck on those nine steps. And out of the free call, you'll get super clarity on where your focus shall be on the next steps. And if it's La Femme, I'd be delighted to, to welcome you in. And if it's something else, we'll, we'll get you there too. So the resourcefulness is, is the next step. So anyways, so glad you joined us, Deanna. I'm glad I was able to make it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let's um touch base. I want to catch up with you too and see see how life is for you. It sounds like you're on the next wave of creation. Working on it. We're all a work in progress, which makes makes life fun if we can keep that perspective of it, right? All right. All right. I'll talk to you soon and to, to everyone. Dream big, all right, and go for it. Know you are worthy.